Do you wanna know more about where your leads are coming from and where you should invest those sales and marketing dollars? Well, HubSpot original source and latest source can provide that information, but only if it's used accurately. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through a masterclass of just that. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. One of the reasons why a lot of companies use HubSpot is they wanna have better decision-making with their data about where their leads in their sales and marketing efforts are coming from and what that means for their business. Well, there are a couple of fields in HubSpot. They're called original source and latest source, and there's a drill down for each, but how you use that information and how it actually comes into the system can be tricky. So let's dive in and actually see what this means. And I have some real use cases with some of the data inside our own portal in HubSpot. So here I've got a contact view and this contact view is actually showing me, we're not looking at any specific contact information in terms of like emails or who they are, but these are real folks here in our CRM. And I've got these um, columns set up so that I've got life cycle stage, original source, original source drill down to so a little more information about that original source the original source drill down number two. So again, that's one more piece of information. And then we've got what's called latest source. So first of all, before we even go any further, what is an original source and what is a latest source? So original source is going to be the original source of that contact. So what this means is original source can be anything that that person may have done with your company. So when we're using original source to report on as a place of sales um, and marketing, like lead generation, we have a couple of things we gotta think through. So first of all, I'm gonna jump ahead to the areas that we can find out what these lead sources actually are, which is gonna be back in the properties of HubSpot. So here in contact properties, you'll see that I sorted by source and we're gonna have the things that I was just talking about. So we've got latest source, we've got original source. So I'm gonna open this up and you're gonna see over on the right hand side, created by, these are all created by HubSpot. And what that means is they come natively with your HubSpot portal. You can't edit or change any of them, which is for a reason. Now, as I open up original source, you'll see as I click on edit that I've got a drop down select of these categories. So first and foremost, when you're looking at tracking lead sources inside of your HubSpot CRM, these are the different buckets that HubSpot is going to place those contacts in. So I'm gonna give you some examples of what this means. So organic search is going to be, they type something into your website, they came to your website as a result of a Google search. It could have been your brand name, it could have been a keyword. You're not going to have that clarity in terms of what the search was at just the HubSpot level. You can use third-party tools to help determine that. We won't go into that in this video, but organic search is going to be, they typed in something and they got to your website. And then for that contact to be created, they had to take some sort of conversion action that then sent them through to your database and they were cookie. So that might be a form submission. It might be like a contact submission. It could be a download. It could be a webinar registration. It could simply be a request for more information, booking a meeting with one of your sales reps. All of those are ways that folks can come into your website. Now, Paid search is going to be just what it sounds like. It's actually going to be paid search on Google or paid search on Bing. That's going to be run through a campaign. It looks for that information coming from a paid platform. We'll mark them as paid search. Email marketing is going to be any marketing email that's sent out through the system and actually then um, that person registers from that. This one's gonna be hard pressed to be found in original source because most of this is gonna be latest source, which is how someone actually converts. We'll get into that in just a second. Organic social, they may have seen you. If you're a B2B company, most likely this is going to be the category where LinkedIn leads come in. Referrals is not referrals in terms of like referrals from another customer. Referrals are going to be another website somewhere else on the web referred your company by actually people clicking on that link, ending up in your website, and then getting that um, conversion. This might be, for, for example, if you're a sponsor of uh, EO, let's say the EO organization, you're listed in their directory. When someone clicks on their directory, they're directed to your website, they convert, it'll show a referral from EO. Other campaigns are going to be what you set up in your analytics and URL builder, so we'll go into that in a minute. Direct traffic is going to be, they went right to your website and converted. So that would be simplestrat.com. They went right into a browser, typed in simplestrat.com, converted, and then actually it shows direct traffic. Um, offline sources would be anything that's a third-party integration. For example, if you use Zoom info, integration is going to show that's where that came from. Now, as we get into drill down one and drill down two, those are going to be the places that we can specify or it will be specified 
what third-party integration did drive that offline source. And then paid social is going to be any ads that are run on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, uh, on Twitter, that then were converted into your uh, CRM. So as I back this out, so again, that's the property. If you're wanting to know what those categories are, before you go any further, it is super, super critical that you understand what these categories mean and what your sales and marketing teams also understand about these categories because I've been in conversations where organic social and paid social are treated as the same conversation when in fact they are measured completely differently. So if this is tripping you up, again, feel free to reach out. We can help uh, help your team with that a little bit more. Now, if you look at latest source, so the difference between original source and latest source is latest source is the thing that converted them into their next action. And what I mean by that is someone can be in your database for a while, but they took a conversion action or they submitted some type of form for something. That would be the latest source. So if you look at, let's say a webinar series, we're going to look at the fact that someone converted into our webinar series, which is in a week here, and their latest source was LinkedIn. That might mean that they are, so, so in terms of their record, it would show organic social, it would show LinkedIn, and then from their original source, the original source might've still showed that they were converted from Zoom info. So again, both of those pieces are important. The thing to keep in mind with latest source is latest source always gets updated based on their last action. So if you are tracking latest source as they convert before they come into a deal, it will get overwritten if in fact they take another action in any part of their lifecycle journey. So that's one thing that creates problems for organizations. We do have a couple of workarounds that we've built for that. If that's causing you issues, reach out to us. We can share more about that. But that's gonna be the difference between original and latest source. So let's go back to our context screen and I'm just gonna walk through these and give you some examples of how this shakes out in our CRM. So for instance, we've got this first lead that is direct traffic. And direct traffic is coming from this specific meeting link for one of our HubSpot consultants, Alexis. So what this means is this contact got Alexis's direct link to her meeting, clicked on it, and then ultimately went to book a meeting with Alexis, which is how she was converted into the system. Now, this can cause issues because let's say that this link was sent out through an email. Why didn't it show email? Unless there's a way for the system to know that that's where it came from, it's going to show direct traffic. So the reason I bring this up is a lot of times there's a lot of direct traffic in terms of original source, and what happens in sales and marketing meetings is you know what, people are going directly to our website. We don't need to do anything else. Why are we spending money on sales and marketing? The key you need to understand is looking into this data here in HubSpot and saying, what direct traffic are they coming from? Because if you're not using the parameters correctly in your emails, it could show direct traffic if they're going to a meeting link, so on and so forth. Always look for the next level of drill down to add more color to your lead sources. The second one. Offline sources, this one says extension. Extension is the sales uh, integration. So it's the Chrome browser extension for HubSpot into Liz, in this case, our team member's Gmail. So she sent an email to this person in her Gmail. They weren't in HubSpot yet. They got added to HubSpot because of this integration. Offline sources, and it says extension. Now, organic social here, Reddit's going to be one of those options. Someone saw our post about our HubSpot newsletter over on Reddit clicked in, signed up to our newsletter, and it show they came from Reddit. I'm gonna go down a little bit here. We've got organic social from YouTube. Same thing here. HubSpot's smart enough to know where they're coming from when they click over from these popular platforms. So in this case, this person came from YouTube, signed up for our newsletter, and then ultimately ended up in, uh, in our CRM. And then we set it up, so I'll show you this in a second here, where we've got parameters in our HubSpot system set up to tell us that they came from this specific campaign on YouTube called HubSpot Hacks. So this is one more piece of clarity that we added into the original source data when we set up the tracking here inside of HubSpot. So down a little bit more, I got a few more examples. So email marketing, the one that I just mentioned, this original source was actually a person had registered for this particular webinar through a series that we're calling the Flywheel Fuel series, and then they registered on this specific email. So again, look at the specificity you can get here, but you have to back it up and think, what do I want to know and how do I use all the tools inside of HubSpot to make this possible? So I'm gonna jump over to a report, and this is just a report I'm gonna show you. So this is 
a report for me to look at when I'm looking at the performance of our webinar series in terms of where are our registrants coming from. So as I can see here, I've got, this is a webinar that we ran back in, in May. Um, I've got uh, people registered for this webinar. So I've got a list set up as the source of this report. And then I've also got, um, looks like they were also in a webinar here in June. So it's the first two webinars that we ran. And I've got direct traffic as one. So again, this might be someone sent it out in an email and it wasn't properly categorized. It might be that we were posting it on something, uh, Slack community, dark social. Dark social would be one of those places. It's anywhere people have conversations about us online where we can't track it back. Email marketing, we send an email out to our entire database, uh, our, our newsletter list with the webinar registration. We got 172 people that came in from that. So again, email marketing, super important these days. If someone says it's dead, it's not dead, but they were on the newsletter first in order for them to engage. Offline sources, we did this integration with LinkedIn and Zapier. So if you registered on LinkedIn, you got zapped over to our HubSpot. That most likely is where this came from. Organic search, they actually were looking for something related to SimpleStrat. It might not have been the webinar, but they were looking for something related to SimpleStrat. They saw that we were having a webinar and they opted in. Other campaigns, the other campaigns is gonna be HubSpot Hacks. Our referrals here, I could dig into what three specific referrals drove people. And then organic social is someone came directly from LinkedIn and registered for our webinar. So the reason I share this is this provides me one specific look at those sources, but this is all latest source. So if I ran this report in two months, the latest source may change for those contacts that we just talked about. So this report is going to ebb and flow based on latest source contact. However, if I did original source, I might not get the same information because someone may have been in our database for two years and then registered for a webinar. And it's still gonna show original source as maybe it was put in by the CRM UI, which means they typed it in by hand, or it was sent by a sales uh, person with the extension. So again, the reason I'm teasing this out is there's so many different layers and parameters around this that if you aren't looking at your data first to understand how you wanna look at it in light of these lead sources going forward, this is not going to be an easy problem for you to solve. Now, let's go back to those property settings. And as I mentioned before, we've got latest source, and an original source, and they've got those set categories. So what set categories do you need to look at when you're looking at lead sources? So if I go into these settings, I'm actually right now over in the reports area, I went to analytic tools, and in the analytic tools, I've got this tracking URL builder. Now we've got a separate video about tracking URLs, setting up UTM parameters, if you wanna watch that, but why I'm showing you this right now is, when you create a tracking URL, you're telling HubSpot how you want that link or that source of traffic or that source of people to converting into leads to be categorized. So when I create a tracking URL, you will see that it's gonna give you a specific page or a, a URL destination you want. So I'm going to go ahead and it's, uh, enter our company name here. So let's say that I was putting simplestrat.com on, um, let's say a Reddit post. So I would put this specific URL, I would select the campaign. So campaigns are going to be a way for you to actually look at your performance in another slice or another filter. For the purposes of original source, we're just going to go ahead and select this flywheel um, as an example. So the source here, again, it's gonna give you those sources that I just showed you. So I'm going to say, you know what, we're going to run, uh, I'm gonna change my mind. We're gonna run paid ads and we're gonna run them to this flywheel uh, series. And then once I select paid source, it gives me the medium, the term, and the content. So if you've ever run paid ads and you have to create parameters inside of, let's say, Google URL Builder, this is that same sort of thing, but it tells HubSpot specifically how to categorize that URL. Let's select a different one. So let's say I'm going to do organic social. And now you can see this is where those drop down number twos come in. So drop down number two, I've got all these different um, options here and I can select any of these specific uh, social networks. So let's just say I'm gonna select that I went ahead and posted this on Vimeo, and then Vimeo will show, if I go back to this screen, Vimeo will show as our original source drill down, okay? So that's how those two shake out. Now, when it gets to these uh, properties down here, there is a direct correlation each time with where this shows up, because it does vary based on the drill down, based on the, um, the original source. So you have to really, again, to fully understand these lead sources and how this tracked, you wanna start with getting better understanding of where your current data is coming from. 
So if I were to create this, then I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this and just show you what we have. So we've got a new and uh, now series that actually is the UTM source is from a sequence that we sent out. The medium is email. So if I were to look at the conversion on this, it would actually come from this specific URL. It would show up in that original source and then the drill down would show me that it's from a sequence and from email marketing. So let's say for example, that I wanted to see all of our leads that have converted from DuckDuckGo. Okay, that's a very specific thing, but you know what? We discovered as of lately that we saw a couple folks come in from DuckDuckGo and we thought, hmm, is this becoming a more popular search engine? Do we need to have uh, maybe some ads that we might test out on DuckDuckGo? So if that was the case, you'll notice that we've got this original source drill down number two, and I would look at that and I would type in um, DuckDuckGo. And then using that information, I can see that there are all these folks, I've got, it looks like 25 leads that have been converted in the last, um, I didn't, this is basically all time in our portal. So if I go into their contact record and you scroll all the way to the bottom of their contact record, this is what will show the original conversion and it, it provides some really great insight. So whenever I'm looking at lead sources and trying to figure out how do we better measure this? How do we understand this? How do we report on this? I wanna look at, in this case, we've got a page view. The original source was from organic search. So again, it doesn't show me specifically DuckDuckGo unless I go and look at that original drill down number two, but I see organic search and they typed in some specific keywords and they ended up on this HubSpot tutorial for beginners, everything you need to know. And then they submitted an exit intent newsletter sign up, which again, those exit intent pieces, if they're highly correlated to the content on the page, convert quite well. So this gives me really good insight to say, you know what, I wonder if we should create, if I did a synopsis of everyone who's converted on that page, I could say, what if we should create this into a paid piece of content and put this out on more networks because people are finding it valuable and that's a really good source of conversion for us. So not only do I wanna report on the information like that, but I also want to then use it to inform additional promotion strategies, additional ways I might get this conversion content uh, in front of other people. So that's gonna be the gist of using lead sources inside of HubSpot. Now, the last piece I wanna point out on the latest source is because it does actually then influence what that source is based on their conversion. So if I register for a webinar today and I was your lead, if in two months I registered for a new webinar, it would show latest source based on what I did for that one. So since that changes, it can be hard to track that with your conversion data in your deals. Sometimes we have to create another property that timestamps things to make that tracking a little bit more effective. If that's a problem you're having, drop us a comment or shoot us an email. We'd be happy to chat about that and kind of the work around there. So that's it. I mean, that's a lot. I feel like by saying that's it, that's so much scratching the surface on lead sources. But if you're wanting to get started with more of that tracking URL, watch our video about that. If you need help figuring out or sourcing those lead sources in your system and reporting on that, we do that for clients every day. Feel free to reach out. For more tips, tricks, and how-tos, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you next week.